Hey Cancer, March is a really interesting month for you. There is a lot of focus on your truth and maybe even changes to your worldview or the way you take in the world around you. Uh, so pretty significant things really. And there is also a focus on your career as well. Uh, there could be some changes in your career or sense of purpose in the world. And these are really gonna play some significant and loud notes throughout this month. Um, but there really is this focus on communication and the mind and, you know, what your truth really is. Before we dive too far into this, however, I just want to thank all of you who have supported this channel with your likes, shares, comments, and subscribes. You can also find links in the description box if you're looking for a personal reading or Reiki session with me. I'm now also on Patreon, so if you're interested in supporting this channel in that way, it's a great way to help me keep putting out this content. I'll actually be having exclusive access to all of my astrology notes for each of the 12 videos. There'll be weekly updates as well as exclusive live streams. So if any of that sounds interesting to you, definitely check out all of that in the description box down below. That is the Patreon link. Um, and I hope you find that interesting. I'm really excited to share that with all of you finally. Uh, anyway, Cancer, I'm super, super curious to see how this kind of unfolds for you. The first card we actually have is the Eight of Wands in reverse. It feels like I, I, uh, things have kind of been challenging, or there was something that you were hoping would go faster. Um, it feels like there's just been this uphill battle. That's really what I, I was getting the moment I, I saw that card. It's like just whatever sort of goal or destination you are working towards, there really could be some challenges there. Now, this could quite it could be quite literal. Uh, this could be quite literal for you because we have this focus in your ninth house in Pisces season, which we are in at the beginning of March here. Um, your energy was actually pretty hard for me to tap into, I'm not going to lie. And it kind of makes sense that we've been in Aquarius season where we're really focused on your eighth house, on things that are hidden or secret. Uh, there, there could just be something that made your energy hard to reach in that month or for February. Um, but I feel as we are now coming more into this Pisces energy, there is still this focus or struggle to move forward in some way. This could also be involving your education. This could be involving things like spirituality or your purpose, perhaps. And I actually have the chariot as kind of lessons that you've been learning about. And this really is a message of perseverance or a lesson of perseverance. Your commitment is being tested and has been tested this month. And I, I think it will continue to be for March. Um, interestingly, this is also your card, Cancer. The chariot represents Cancer energy. And so I feel like you are coming into alignment with yourself. And especially around these new and full moons, it, it's very important that we pay attention to the moon with your sign because you are ruled by the moon. And I'm looking at these two uh, sphinxes here, the black and white, and it reminds me of the new and full moons. So I, I feel like it's very important for you to pay attention to these cycles, pay attention where they fall in your natal chart or how they affect you in your life. Uh, this new moon is actually happening on March 2nd. This is in your ninth house. This is in Pisces energy. And again, this could be some sort of philosophical or um, ex exploratory time for you. Uh, you may be coming across different beliefs or ideas that really start opening your worldview or connecting with spirituality in a new way. You might be learning more about astrology. You might be learning more about intuition or psychic abilities or some sort of spiritual concept that is helpful to you. Um, it also does feel like there could be this focus on your education, on figuring out ways to branch out into a new career or in into a new part of the world in some way. Uh, so pretty big energies here, and I, I do get a lot of cards, um, or I have a lot of cards here that do indicate potential travel as well. I do see a Five of Pentacles here, and I'm not going to lie, this energy feels a bit like a struggle. And you might be feeling a little left out in the cold. Financially, things could be pretty difficult. Very often with this card, though, there is help within reach. 
Um, and that might be something that you are not seeing or something that is hard to see or reach out for. Um, but I think it's really important for you to ask for help this month with this Five of Pentacles. I am also thinking of a pretty big conjunction around this new moon that I was just talking about. This is happening on the 3rd, so the day after. We have a conjunction between Mars, Venus, and Pluto. And kind of given the, the current climate uh, of the world right now, this could be a very transformative week. Um, this this energy is really about uh, transformation, shifts in power, taking action on things. There's also this financial component or uh, material component that could be making things feel very unstable. And so if something feels unstable, I feel like you're supposed to ride out a situation. You're supposed to have faith. You're supposed to keep going and keep pushing yourself. And I, I do kind of have as a potential challenge for you the Eight of Cups here. Now, the Eight of Cups can be, uh, again, a, a card that indicates travel. So it's so interesting to me that this is such an important part of um, this reading, or it seems to be quite recurring for a lot of you anyway. Maybe you're trying to move, or maybe you're trying to just go someplace or expand your awareness or knowledge in some way. And with the new moon on the second, it is also conjunct Jupiter, which is a very expansive energy. And again, it makes me really wonder if there is some sort of spiritual retreat or some sort of travel or pilgrimage that you are planning or potentially going on this month. Um, I think it's important that you do this. Uh, I think it's very important for your well-being that you do this, actually, or, or for your spiritual growth. I want you to really figure out where your intuition or where your heart is pulling you this month. That feels very, very important for me. And don't let money hold you back. There might be some sort of opportunity that can open itself up to you. So don't even necessarily focus on manifesting enough money so you can go on a trip or go on a retreat or whatever this is or whatever it is that you want to do. Uh, just manifest the things that you want. And the universe may be able to give those experiences to you or give something similar to you. And I'm really looking at this Eight of Cups and I'm seeing the full moon in this card as well. So there is a path ahead that is being lit or not lit, lit up. What is being illuminated to you around the full moon on March 18th? This is going to be in Virgo. This is actually your third house. Communication, ideas, the conscious mind. This is also the house of siblings. And for some reason, I'm kind of looking at this five of pentacles and I'm wondering if you are struggling with your siblings or your sibling is going through some struggles. Obviously, that's not going to apply to all of you. Um... There might be something happening with siblings this month. And you actually could be providing relief or they could provide relief to you. There's something about siblings helping one another that seems really important this month. Um, but with this full moon kind of lighting up your conscious mind, things are becoming very clear. And there could be changes in your immediate environment. And maybe that's why things feel unstable or a little uncomfortable in the middle of this month. However, we are ending off on a very strong note with Temperance and the Star here, both beautiful cards, and I love to see them. Temperance signifies healing and balance and things that take time. It's, it's almost like an alchemical process of transmutation. Something is taking form. You are finding the gold in lead. And you're really creating something quite beautiful. And this is a work of art. And that does take time. And the star is also another card that can signify healing. Specifically energy healing or holistic healing. I think of this card as tapping into faith or hope. And I think, especially with the times that we are in right now, where everything feels so insecure, there is a very profound and important wellspring of faith 
that we can tap into this year as we have Jupiter and Neptune in Pisces, which again is your ninth house, which can involve spirituality. You have a very strong spiritual foundation or you can build a very strong spiritual foundation this year that can help you have a center or a core that helps you move through whatever situation you are finding yourself in. And it's very important that you are meditating, that you're taking the time to do some sort of practice or ritual, especially around the moons. As a Cancer, it's very important that you pay attention to the lunar cycles. If the moon is full, if the moon is new, what signs are these moon placements in uh, or moon phases in? And I actually look at the full moon in Virgo uh, as kind of a commitment to working with these lunar energies because the third house, Virgo energy for you, is literally called the Temple of the Moon. And this involves ritual. This involves working with the lunar cycles and things like tarot and divination and automatic writing. So these could be tools that you are tapping into this time. You could be tapping into your own intuition. I feel like some of you are actually learning about Reiki or energy healing, um, some sort of modality like that. Others of you are learning more about divination like tarot or astrology, or I'm actually getting specifically uh, I Ching is one that is coming up for me, which is quite interesting here. Um, so maybe some of you are learning that or connecting with that. I always recommend connecting with um, forms of divination that are connected to your bloodlines or ancestry specifically. Uh, these can be very, very powerful for us. Um, so that might be something that you are doing. You might be connecting with your roots in some way. And especially as a Cancer, you are connected to your lineage in a very strong way. You manifest all the strengths and weaknesses of your family line in a very profound way. So keep that in mind too. Um, I think you're really tapping into the spiritual or healing gifts of your family. And that's going to be different for each of you. Um, but I, I think it's very important that you continue to follow this intuitive guidance. And I feel like, Cancer, you've just been going through such a hard time. Um, you know, we've had Pluto in your opposite sign in Capricorn. There's been a lot of energy in Capricorn as of late. And with the conjunction on the third, there really could be like a, a very profound moment. And, and that could result in some very big changes, especially for those of you in relationships or in partnerships of some kind. But I think it's changing the way that you relate to other people as well. Um, so that's very, very interesting. But actually, I'm really getting the sense it's most important for you to focus on your spirituality this month, for you to focus on your truth and to be open to new ideas and concepts. I'm going to pull an animal card for you to kind of wrap things up. Um, but very, very interesting energy here. What is the animal wisdom for cancer? Show us clearly, please. Show us clearly. We have the fish, which has a moon right in here, very much connected uh, to the lunar cycles and the tides. Fish is about going with the flow, but sometimes to its own detriment. Sometimes it can get thrown by the tides. And if you feel like you're just very scattered or things feel insurmountable to you, I really encourage you to have a checklist or have manageable tasks that you can complete with this card. Um, very interesting that it is fish because this is uh, Pisces energy and we are going to be very much in Piscean energy this month, especially for the first part of March until the 20th. Um, and we have that new moon in Pisces. And then we'll still have Jupiter and Neptune in Pisces as well. Again, you're very, very intuitive and very, very tapped in to your spirituality or you have the ability to be. Um, and it's very important that you are moving with these tides. And there could be some changes. There could be some moves. And this card also does talk about travel. So please let me know in the comment section down below if there's something with travel, if you're planning travel or wanting to travel, or if there are some plans you are acting on this month. I'd love to hear that. Um, is there any other animal messages for cancer? I feel like there's one more... We have the swan. Oh my God, beautiful. So there is a lot of reflection this month. I feel like some of you are... I will say some of you are working with writing 
because the swan represents Saraswati, the goddess of poetry, writing um, in Hinduism. It's a very mystical energy here. It's kind of the marriage between the air element, the mind, and the water element, the emotions, the heart. And you are very much between worlds this month. You're very much a mystic this month. And I feel like you're going through a spiritual initiation or, or process. That's just the sense I get from these messages or from these cards, especially with the Eight of Cups. I often think of this as the journey to becoming the hermit. You are climbing a mountain. And it's hard to know what is on the other side of this mountain from where you currently stand, but you know you have to go there. The path is being lit for you. Follow this path. Have faith in your journey. And with this writing and, and poetry, I, I am again thinking of the full moon in Virgo, actually. I, I often think of Virgo as the writer of the Zodiac. I know traditionally most astrologers say that is Gemini. Sure, I'm, I'm sure there is a Gemini quality to that because both of these signs are ruled by Mercury, the god of messages. Um, but I, I think, I really think writing specifically is, is super important to Virgo energy. And I think some of you might be doing automatic writing. You could be doing poetry. You could just be journaling or writing down your manifestations, writing down affirmations for yourself. There's a lot of reflection this month. And with the full moon in your third house, the temple of the moon, I think it's very important that you are paying attention to the moon and even going day by day, perhaps. And working with these lunar cycles is a great way to heal and manifest by, by becoming aware of what energies are available to us. And I often talk about these in, in my uh, readings anyways, but I, I think just for your own knowledge, it's important for you to kind of track this as well. I do also want to say, um, I, I think some of you, with the swan card... I feel like some of you are, are thinking about twin flames or twin flame relationships. I think there's almost this energy, honestly, that I'm getting um, where it's like you use that concept to justify unhealthy relationships. And you're now kind of looking at your own behaviors or your own patterns in relationships, the other person's patterns in relationships. And there's like a distortion on the surface of the water as I'm talking about this. I'm literally seeing ripples on water kind of shattering or, or distorting a reflection. I don't think this person is actually your twin flame. And even if they were, that doesn't mean that this person is good for you. Um, I think that's something that's really important to keep in mind. Um, especially with this sort of uh, energy in, in Capricorn, especially around the third, that could be something that's really important to to reflect on as well. If you, you are someone who is um, kind of subscribed to this twin flame ideology, I don't necessarily disbelieve in it, but I think a lot of people use this um, to justify toxic relationships. And I think it's kind of become something of a cliche. To be honest, most often I don't think twin flame relationships actually are romantic. Um, but that's just my perspective on it. Anyways, um, those are all the messages I am getting for you, Cancer. I do hope that this was helpful. Be sure to hit like and subscribe. Again, links for all of my services and my Patreon are in the description box down below. If you'd like even more clarity or there just wasn't something that resonated in this reading, you are welcome to check out the readings for your moon, rising, or Venus sign. Uh, I have an astrology calculator in the description box down below that should be able to help you figure those out if you have no idea what I'm talking about. And I will see you all in the next video. Take care, Cancer, and have a happy March.